said, what sinkhole? And they brought me around here and showed me this. So then I started asking questions about why isn't it fixed or are we, do we have a plan to get it fixed and how did it happen? Who managed the project from day one? How did a $445,000 grant turn into a $2.563 million? You all have put everyone involved in this project on notice that you, you want this fixed and Darlington taxpayers are not gonna pay for this twice. Absolutely. If I didn't do that, I'd be derelict in my duties. <laughs> Negligent, defective, careless, and reckless. Just some of the words the city of Darlington used to describe the work of three contractors, one based in Monroe, hired by the city to build a $3 million stormwater system. We've detailed the problems with our project in our drained investigation from last fall. Tonight, the city's going after those contractors in civil court looking to make them pay. Here's Chief Investigator Jody Barr with an update to Drained, a Queen City News investigation. And obviously, the seals where the pipe goes into this catch basin have failed. And the material is going into the catch basin and going on down the, the storm sewer. Darlington Utilities Director Charles Schugert showed us these sinkholes in October. This is a very expensive device. If it gets deep enough to make this thing move one way or another, it'll have to be completely rebuilt. Now, more than three months later, they're still there and growing in October. About a year ago, city staff reported to me that serious problems developed in the project that was barely three years old. The city told the public about what it uncovered. Based on ABS's preliminary evaluation, portions of the storm drain system are inadequate and the project could be described at least in part as a failure. The city hired a Charlotte-based forensic engineering firm to investigate. Engineer Stephen Moore told council the problems with the drainage project were many, but the main takeaway, the nearly $3 million project may have to be redone. The storm drain system is a result of poor design and or construction. The system is not functional, does not appear to have the required capacity for the present stormwater loads in fact. Some of the stormwater pipes are significantly undersized. The city identified three contractors that night. The designer, Hannah Engineering, the builder, Lansdowne Earth and Pipe, and the builder's insurer, Developer Surety and Indemnity Company. One contractor was in the audience that night. Janie Lathan, who owns Lathan Consulting. Lathan was the city's hired stormwater consultant at the time of the project. And with a unanimous vote that night in October. I'll second. Mr. Bell, Ms. Pegas. The city warned the people who had a hand in the design and construction. If they did not make this right, the city would ask a court too. The city sent contractors a notice to cure letter, giving them 60 days to inspect the defects and to offer a remedy to cure or settle the claims. But the city says not one contractor agreed to take care of it. So the city filed a lawsuit two weeks ago. The city sued Lathan Consulting, Hannah Engineering, and Lansdowne Earth and Pipe, accusing each of breach of contract and negligence. Lathan was under an administration contract with the city managing the federal grant. The complaint states Lathan failed to properly monitor the project, didn't properly advise the city along the way, and Lathan failed to provide proper administration under her contract. The contract paid Lathan up to $75,000 for technical and administrative services and another $7,000 to submit a grant application and to come up with grant funding strategy development and implementation. The agreement also paid Lathan $108 an hour for additional work. This email the city provided also shows Lathan identified herself as the project administrator while working to gather easements for the project alongside the project manager from Hannah Engineering. Lathan later clarified, though, she was only the project administrator for the grant. We tried to interview Lathan the night of that October City Council meeting. Hey, Ms. Lathan. Hey, I'm Jody Barr with Queen City News out of Charlotte. Yes. Can we talk to you about this project that you headed? I have no comment on this project. You heard what they said tonight. I it was a failure. I they said, and I have no comment on this project. You're a lot of things that were said tonight was not true. So y'all need to do some investigative reporting. You, you don't want to take this chance to defend yourself? I don't have to defend myself for anything. What, what are you trying to do? Lathan did not respond to our request to interview her about the lawsuit. 
the city accused Hanna Engineering of a list of failures, including failures in design and not complying with construction codes, industry standards, and customary practices. The lawsuit also claims Hanna Engineering never turned over evidence it conducted soil tests, design calculations, or took steps to prevent contamination from raw sewage. Whew. That stinks. We found evidence of raw sewage right where the city told us we would when we visited the site last fall. We asked Hannah Engineering for an interview, but the owner declined. Hannah's attorney sent us a statement. Hannah has not caused the isolated issues the city claims to be experiencing with the drainage system. Hannah's system design was appropriate. The city recently hired Hannah for its engineering expertise on another project. Hannah vehemently denies liability in this matter and looks forward to the exoneration of its design in a court of law. The city made similar allegations against Monroe-based Lansdowne Earth and Pipe. Lansdowne and its agents, servants, employees, and or subcontractors were negligent, careless, reckless, willful, and wanton in failing to construct the project in accordance with applicable building codes and industry standards in a diligent and workmanlike manner, the city wrote in the lawsuit. We tried to find Lansdowne officials, President Maria Verdanas and Manager Vince LaBarbera. Neither returned calls and texts to phone numbers we found for them. An address on the contract with the city led to a home with a no trespassing sign and the other to this building on Concord Highway. An online search shows one year after finishing the Darlington project, North Carolina tax investigators charged Verdonis and La Barbara with multiple counts of embezzlement of state property for failing to pay state withholding tax. Union County court records show both pleaded guilty to the charges in December 2020. North Carolina Secretary of State records show Lansdowne Earth and Pipe was dissolved after those guilty pleas. It is of particular importance to note that the city of Darlington, as of June 30, 2023, we still have a balance due of $1,985,000. The city manager told us last fall he couldn't let what he uncovered go and did not want Darlington taxpayers to pay for something he says they never received. I had one of two choices. Either I could say nothing, I could take the easy path and I could do nothing, and I could let the ratepayers, the customers of the city of Darlington, pay for this but that's not right. The second thing I can do is I can go to my attorney and have him contact the lawyers and the, and the insurance companies for the contractor, for the engineering firm, and for the project manager. And I chose the second option because I think they're the ones liable for this and I think they're the ones responsible. The city's also going after the builder's insurer, developer surety and indemnity company. I could not find a phone number, address, or any way to reach any principal with that company to offer them an opportunity to respond. None of the defendants have yet filed written answers to this complaint, but they have 30 days after they're served with it to respond to the court. We'll continue to follow this case as it moves through the court system, something that could likely take years to resolve.